and the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met. Doshi, if I could just start with you. Since 2008, the McKinsey Company has done nearly a billion dollars in consulting work for the United States government. A billion dollars. And its top client has been the Defense Department. In fact, it's got contracts with the Defense Department, with the U.S. Department of the Navy, with the Homeland Security Department, with Customs and Border Patrol. I think in 2021 alone, McKinsey had Defense Department or other security agency contracts worth $850 million. It's absolutely extraordinary. And yet, at the same time, they're also doing business with the Chinese government. They are simultaneously taking a billion dollars from the United States and its security agencies and also getting money from not just China in general, from the Chinese government and Chinese-controlled entities. Explain to us why that is a problem. I think any normal American who's sitting out there and hears that would be absolutely outraged by it, and rightly so. Why, why are they getting taxpayer money advising our military and simultaneously advising the Chinese military? But just explain to us, why is this a national security concern? Well, thank you, Senator Hawley. Uh, I agree this is a national security concern. I would go further. I mean, the nature of the work that McKinsey did reportedly involved helping China consider how to outcompete U.S. technology firms, how to strengthen Made in China 2025. The goal was to help them advance their goals for technological dominance. And that is directly at odds with the interests not just of the U.S. government, but also of the corporate clients they had in the United States that they were also advising. So there's a clear conflict of interest there. And it's also, you know, the kind of conflict of interest that even if McKinsey had exercised better judgment about the projects it took on, other firms doing business in China are getting raided by the Chinese government. Oftentimes, that means that their data is no longer secure. And if they have U.S. client data on those servers, well, that's now Chinese data. So there's a lot of concerns, I think, that we can we can raise here. One is the nature of the work. Another is being a vector for the transfer of information and data. And there's a third concern, too, which is that some of these firms have mutually irreconcilable obligations to the United States and to China. You know, China's basically saying, if you want to comply with the subpoena from this committee, you can't, because we have a data security law saying you can't. That's three different kinds of conflicts beyond the one senator that you just identified. Well, that's, that's terrific. You know, as we think about the different things that McKinsey has advised China on, they are, for example, a major proponent and promoter of China's Belt and Road Initiative. So the, here, here they are, again, taking a billion dollars in contracts from the United States military, simultaneously advising China on their Belt and Road Initiative, which is meant to undermine our military and also to undermine American companies all across the world. McKinsey has advised nine of the top 15 Chinese contractors for the Belt and Road Initiative as of 2018. I mean, it's, it's really, it's shameless when you think about it. It is absolutely shameless. You know, interestingly, I, I recently obtained a document related to a contract, just to give one example, involving semiconductors. So semiconductors, McKinsey entered into a contract with the U.S. government, our Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA, in 2021, related to semiconductors. The DOD asked McKinsey if there was any conflict that they might have with the Chinese government. According to these documents recently released to me pursuant to a FOIA request, McKinsey submitted documentation that said that there were, there were no conflicts no conflicts at all. And in fact, as we, as we now know, they were simultaneously advising the Chinese government on a very similar project. I mean, this to me, it seems like such common sense. The chairman and I wrote to the, uh, the GAO asking for an analysis of the conflict of interest law and analysis of the procurement uh, and contract uh, awarding process to see if there were any strictures, limitations in current law that would prevent companies like McKinsey from simultaneously making billions from the United States and making billions on China. That report has just come back just a couple of days ago. And what it shows is, is that there are, there are no such restrictions in United States law currently, which is why our legislation, the Time to Choose Act, which the chairman and I co-sponsored together, introduced and passed this committee almost unanimously, I think only one no vote, is so important because it would prevent what we see on this poster behind me. Um, Ms. Teltman, do you want to add to this why, why this sort of common sense set of restrictions telling consulting firms you can't consult for the U.S. government and rake in billions from American taxpayers and consult for our chief adversary at the same time, why, that this, why this is important and why it's a matter of national security? Thank you, Senator. I, I read that GAO report and I am uh, 
I join you in uh, your concern about the lack of uh, laws and guidance right now currently guiding contracting officials on this issue. Uh, one thing I will note is that the, the FAR provisions related to conflicts of interest are quite broad uh, and could uh, capture some of this, but most government officials won't feel comfortable taking this sort of action without uh, greater guidance and directives explicitly giving them comfort uh, that, they can, that they can look to in taking these sorts of actions. Uh, I, I share similar concerns as you. I, I get nervous when things are too restrictive and there's too many absolutes, but I, you raise very good points uh, about why contracting officials need better laws and need to be empowered to make these types of decisions. Yeah, very good. Uh, Mr. Riley, let me just ask you, because your exchange with Senator Paul I thought was illuminating. You said that there's a continuum between banning everything on the one end and then everything goes on the other end. So I take it from from your testimony today, you're on the, the anything goes side of the spectrum. No. So you support this bill then? Uh, as I mentioned in my comments earlier, we support the goals but we're concerned that it leads to a slippery slope, potentially. We 100% support legislation that would advance our national security and protect our national security. I will say, based on the conversation I've heard this morning, if these companies are giving China advice, either they're giving pretty bad advice or China's not taking it very well because their economy is on the downhill slide instead of going up. I, if they are legitimate, well, wait a minute. They're, they're on the mar they're on the march in the Pacific. McKinsey advised them on building out islands in the South China Sea. At the same time, it was getting defense contracts. So, I guess is your position that you are opposed to you want you want Amer you want companies to be able to get taxpayer money from the United States and simultaneously get money from the Chinese government? My that's concern, that's fine. My concern, Senator, is how do you differentiate between that? How you draw the line between that? and a soybean farmer, which depends on China for its exports, and simultaneously- The soybean is farmer isn't advising the Chinese military on how to take feeding, over the United States. I come, from a, I come from a state them. where our number one agricultural product are, is soybeans. Right, and we are a state of soybean farmers, and I can tell you, I think they would take great offense to you comparing them to a consulting firm that is taking a billion dollars in money from the United States military while simultaneously advising the Chinese military on how to harm the United States. Are you saying that soybean farmers harm the security interests of the United States? I think I'm that's saying, a ridiculous as position. As I said, with respect to 232 national security legislation, it starts out here. The next thing you know, we're restricting trade with the UK, with Israel, with our allies. That's not how do you know? How do you know that's not going to happen again? That's all I'm asking. We need to have guardrails to make sure that our soybean farmers and other producers aren't harmed like we have been in recent years by our Yeah, I, I think that's the most, frankly, it's absurd history. instance it's of history. whataboutism. It it's makes history. Just, just listening to you say it is refutes itself. I'm, ta I'm, I'm not talking about hypotheticals. I'm ta talking about what has actually happened, and I don't want to see that repeat. You're, you're talking about something that is not in this bill, and you're equating soybean farmers with a consulting firm that is advising the Chinese military. It's I'm absolutely a, absurd. I'm equating national security. And here security. you are opposing, opposing... In the name of, you represented taxpayers, you are here testifying in favor, apparently, of allowing a company to take tax money. This is tax money. This is a billion dollars in taxpayer money McKinsey is raking in while also going to our chief adversary, selling our secrets, essentially, and making money from them. What could be worse for the American taxpayer? I can't think of anything, which is why this bill passed overwhelmingly in this committee. And I thank you all for your testimony today. Thank you, Senator Peters, again, for your, your hard work on this and support. I appreciate it. And thanks for holding this hearing.